So Jim Evertier sat alongside Darren Till ahead of his UFC welterweight title fight going down tomorrow evening at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas, UFC 228. Darren, we're uh, after the weigh-ins now, 169 this morning. First of all, uh, let's get back to media day where I was asking you what the next 24 hours looked like. What did it look like and how easy, how easy was it making that weight? I just didn't expect it to be what it was. Uh, I got out of bed about six Thursday afternoon just mentally preparing myself from six o'clock you know just to make the weight it's it's always a mental struggle so you know I put my sweet sweats on I put me uh, you know me, me running suit on I put some you know a, a track suit over there hat on and I went down to do like my ritual run which is a 50 minute run which yeah. I no matter how much I'm weighing, I always shared a lot of weight on that. Yeah. But this time was just completely different. I, I was so, so hydrated, and my body just had so much muscle. I, I literally, the treadmill when I got off it was like, it, I think they wanted to bring me off it halfway through mm. because they thought I was going to slip. It was just drenched full of water. And I was like, I, usually on them runs, I take about 1.5 kilo off two if I get a good day I mean I'm sure that with that run alone I took like 2.5 I mean I might go as far to say as three wow so I had I think I went into weight cut I think I was about 80.5 81 80.5 around there so that's 3.5 maybe four kilo so if I did cut the three yeah that's one left and how did that kind of make you feel? Did that kind of spur but you I didn't on? Know, you know. But I didn't know. So they didn't tell you. No, I, I don't like to know. It's like no. a mental thing with me. I like to just get me sh me, me stuff on, and 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 halfway through weight cutting, if I start feeling a little bit of it, I'll say let's weigh ourselves and see where we're at. Mm. So I'd done the run, sat down for like five minutes, just let the sweat just pour out of me, and I mean I was just full of energy. I was just like wow. From there, I was like, yeah, this week, this week's done. So then the guys told me that the sauna was just chock. I was just full of people. I was like, okay, yeah, let's go. On. You know, let's let's go there. I didn't know if uh, Woodley was there or not. I know he's been in and out the sauna all week. So mm. he's he's a wrestler. So wrestlers cause weight in saunas. You know? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, they, they are uh, known for that. So I wasn't bothered anyway. You know what I mean? We're cutting weight together. We're cutting weight together. We're not gonna get up and. Happy. start trying to <laughs> tired fight each other so I went in there and all the guys were just in their clothes they were all just you know they were just doing the thing and I got to the the, the sauna and I uh, stepped in with me, me clothes on and then just gradually started taking them off I'm, I'm not a guy who sits in the sauna with the clothes on I like to see the sweat just for my own mental state coming off me Yeah. so I took my clothes off and I, I said to Colin my coach I said I only want one guy with me on this weight cut I said I don't want anyone else around me I said I just want Grundy Grundy you know he's a, he's a ter terrific uh, weight cutter uh, some big news coming about him soon uh, so I just wanted him do you know what I mean uh, he, he gives the good massage to start sweating more you know he's a wrestler like Woodley so he knows his shit that the wrestlers do you know you've got to yeah. give them one thing they know how to cut weight so he was in there with me and, and, and sweat from all around my body I mean I could see it and there was like a light in the sauna and I could see the sweat just coming through so I had Grundy scraping me with like a hotel card yeah you know scraping the sweat and and usually when you scrape it, it takes maybe 30 to a minute to come back it was just coming back straight away and I, I was dripping in sweat so I thought to myself if I do maybe four four sessions of this five seven minutes I was like I want to check my weight just for me own. I just want to see what's going on so I st the first time I went in for like seven minutes then got out stayed out for about a minute got back in stayed in for about five got out got back in on the fourth go I said to the, my nutritionist I want I said should we, should we check weight I said I know you're eager to see what my weight is yeah. Colin was standing there he was eager and Grundy was also I think we knew I was close so I wanted to set up scales the same as the UFC ones in the workout room around the back so I just went and lied on a few towels until I was dried off 
And then I said, come on, let's check. So, you know, stepping on them scales, you know, it was like, oh, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? I was expecting myself to be about 173. Yeah. Now, if I would have looked at 173, I would have been like, that's that's amazing, that's terrific. That's good. I'd made weight. I, stepped, I stepped on and I just, I'd made weight. I was 170.2. I just went. How did that feel? I've never made <laughs> weight that quick. That You're talking 50 minute run and then maybe 20 minutes in the sauna. Mm. That's not even two hours work. All the fighters have been in the sauna before me. Uh, Zabit was actually running next to me. You know, he looked like he was having a tough cut. The, the Russians cut hard oh, anyway. Man, I mean, me. they're just fucking animals. But, you know, on my run, I was running fast. I was, I always smash me run. I, I love the run to see how the sweat is. You know, it, it's, you know, sometimes my speed bump is the hours and hours mm. where your body just does stop, start sweating. But I've never, ever in my life, ever, all the weight cuts I've had, I've had over 80, you know, had a weight cut like that. It was just terrific. How did it feel when you stepped on, early, what was it, early last night and you'd made weight already? I was just like, wow, these three weeks. I was, I had energy all week. I mean, I seen that Woodley said I was getting, he seen me getting carried out. He know he never seen me that, getting carried what, what, Clear that up, was that bullshit? That was, that was 100% bullshit. We passed each other in the hallway on Tuesday night, oh I can't remember, and he had all his sweats on his monster tracksuit and I had my tracksuit. My tracksuit was visible for the sweat, so yeah I did have a bit of sweat, but I had two tracksuits on, so yeah. the other one was more sweat, but he knows he'd never seen me getting carried, no way. I think he just wants to, you know, play on the weight thing, yeah, but it's just fucking fine, mate, my game's just good. But, uh, this, this week, I was just full of energy, I was smashing my runs, and, and, and I made weight last night like I've never made it in my life. To see that, I just came back and funny story, so my girlfriend's, she's trying to uh, sleep last night and I don't know why I was doing this but I was just craving like something so bad. So I was watching this guy drinking a can of coke and it is the <laughs> cra he's the craziest guy you have ever seen in your life. I'm gonna show this to, to the video. So his name is something sort of like ASMR. ASMR. Drinking a can of ice cold Coca Cola. Now this video is two point eight. Stupid. So this is him. Right there. We're trying to superimpose this in. Okay. Oh, this is. See, I've been watching this video. Doing? It's right. So he, he puts <laughs> this up, and then he speaks dead softly into the camera. I mean. He's a bit of a like thing. Guys, and welcome to another ASMR video. <laughs> now this was requested by Chanta. So thank you for the request. I hope you enjoy it. So he drinks a can of coke and it was just making me so happy last night knowing that I'll be able to do it. No. Here's the can ice cold. Now he does that, I don't know why he does that, but he does it. But I was loving him last night. What's your girlfriend thinking of? She's asleep. <laughs> oh, he's got the glass. Oh, he pours it, he shakes it. Had you had a can of coke at this point? No, I was, I was, oh, fucking, shit. Yeah, I was on weight, I was, I was dying, <laughs> I was <weren't> dying, <laughs> but I was just crazy, everyone knows what the cravings are like, oh, he, he goes <laughs> for it, <laughs> oh, he, he, I don't know what he's doing, what is he doing, he's trying to load the subscribers though, he's gonna go oh. for it, Watch the face. Oh, watch the face. Oh. <laughs> Laura! Get me a can of coke! I'm gonna have to imitate this shit on camera, Jim. How many oh. how, how many have you had since? No, I, I, I only have one can of coke, you know, after weigh-ins. So whether it be the day of the weigh-ins or the fight day, I only have one can of coke just to cure them cravings. So, here it is. Let's, here it let's is. do it. Oh my god! Here we go. Oh my god! Let's. Uh, I've got to. I've got to let you do the honors. 
Oh, it's cold. It's like cold. <laughs> cold can of coke. Oh. <laughs> should, we see what it, should we see if it's as good as, as that cunt was making out of me last night? Oh, it's open. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, here we go. There you go, uh, smashed it. Was it as good as you'd have been actually? Yeah, it was. I did have a can of coke last night at three in the morning. Did you? Yeah, that was just, just. My weight was like 169, so I was like, yeah. There's no reason to stay a pound under, so I'll have a coke. So I did have like half a glass, and then I came back up. The, and sorry, this was at one. Yeah. And I came back up and I said I'll check at four, and then I checked again at four and it hadn't moved, so the coke hadn't really done anything to me. So I went back down, had a little glass of water, so, you know, even... It's been, it's been all right then, it's not like it's been like some crazy rough experience where you've been carried out of like saunas Listen, and all sorts, it sounds like it was actually quite a good two part. rough experiences in MMA. Yeah. One was in Sweden after my nearly two year layoff, yeah. and the one was my last fight. Yeah. And everyone knows what happened. Yeah. You know, I, I did have an emergency to attend to, Stephen Thompson knows this, his father knows this, but they made such a big deal out of the weight cut, mm. even leading up to now, that it was like, I've seen even some guys comment like, can we just shut up about Till missing weight for his last fight, because it's like he's the only guy who's missed weight. Mm. You know, I don't want to name names, but we know that a lot of guys have missed weight in the UFC, yeah, so. Like, you know, like you say, it was almost like everyone just focused on the fact that you, you had missed weight and yeah, no one else had ever done it in history, right? Yeah. So today, when, when you, you step on the scales, 169 pounds, there's, like, like, there's already an iconic photo kind of doing the rounds, you flipping Col the birds. Colin said to me it's his favourite photo he's ever seen. I mean, that is some photo. That, that it's is a hell of a one, isn't it? Photographer. He's uh, following him on Instagram. It's, it's a very good photo. What's his name? Photographer. I don't even know. Oh, I've seen him, I think. He's very actually. good. He's very good, works for the UFC. But yeah. um, it is, is going to go down in history as one of those iconic photos. But yeah. tell me, what, what was that feeling? Because you, you were kind of talking about it in the media day. This was, this was a, a big statement to everyone. It was, yeah. It just was... I'm going to tell the truth right now. I'm going to be totally honest. I, I, I am I am just... This is truthful now. I'm a guy. I don't let uh, the opinions of anyone uh, take over my, my mind or anything like that. I, I, as I say time and time again, I don't really care. But this time, it's like... What's that famous Einstein saying? If you sort and you tell a fish... If you judge a fish by its ability... It's like if you tell a fish a thousand times or something, you're stupid. Yeah. It'll start. It, or it's not actually an Einstein quote, but it's a quote. It's something along the lines. I'll find it now. Like if you tell, you know, if you someone, tell a lie a thousand times. Yeah, but it can be translated in many ways. I've seen the mm. quote. I don't remember, but like that many people were saying that I was gonna miss weight for this fight against against Woodley. That I actually was thinking, am I gonna make weight? Like a D, yeah. like fun. Put the element this, of doubt. Yeah, just that element. So, you know, when I arrived to, to work with the nutritionist in Vegas, he checked me weight the first day. He was like, yeah, you're great. We're going to fly this weight. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm usually what I'm always around. I'm like, and, and I was happy. Meals were great, big. I mean, meals were too big sometimes. Like I was coming down for breakfast and I swear I had a bowl of oats like that with all sorts. And I was like, I was eating, I was only eating half of it. I was like, this is way too much. I'm not used to this. Yeah. Because like, till eat it, trust the process. So a stranger basically coming from George Lockhart, his his like firm, you know, Lock Lock and Load is whatever yeah. it's called. I you know a young kid. He's only 21. I put all my trust. Colin put all our trust into him, and he smashed it. He, he, smashed it. he had a he did get a lot of a. Uh, Put Carl was, you know, on his back a lot because Carl was as worried and as you say, we didn't know him until we seen him in Vegas. And and, and look at what he's done, he's look at the name he's just made for himself, you know, it's and and you know it's, if if whatever happens, I will always work at that guy now, you know what I mean? He's just and, and I like him, you know. Yeah. I do like him, I think he's dedicated and he's ambitious to what he does, you know. He, he, he reminds me of, of me, how hard work I am, so 
perfect. He, he grabbed that opportunity by the balls and he really went far with it. Perfect. You know, um, obviously now... Oh, they're going to have Coke. <laughs> You've made the way now. We're now smashing a can of Coke, but I guess now it, the mindset switches to the fight. Uh, how, how do you kind of feel mentally now ahead of this one? Like Tyron, obviously, all week has been a difficult character to deal with for uh, other people, I guess, in the media as well, um, with, with everyone, and he's been acting slightly as if someone has got in his head, I, w I would say that. Yeah. What, what, how, how do you uh, kind of approach listen, it? Listen, I can't speak for Tyron, I don't want to sit here on camera and say, Tyron's, listen, Tyron's what, 36? Tyron has had harder fights than me, than me, he's beat better competition. Why would I sit here and say, no, I have or whatever, he has, hmm. he is the champion. Uh, I don't know what's going through his head, good or bad thoughts. We all have the good and bad thoughts, I have bad thoughts, what if, actually what if this happens? It's just it's just the mentality of a fighter. Will fighters say it? I, I don't know, but I will, because I'm, I'm not afraid of to speak about my fears or anything, or, or that just shows how mentally tough I am. Uh, I just, he, he knows the test ahead, he knows the test ahead, he knows I am a test, he knows I'm not a pushover, I'm not coming in there to make the numbers up with him, I'm not coming in there to say, oh yeah, I fought the champ in a good five round fight, no, I'm coming in there to beat Tara Mudley any way I can, like that, that's, that's, that's how I'm coming in the fight, so it doesn't matter how, how he's feeling, how he is mentally, it doesn't matter how I'm feeling or how, how I am mentally, we are going to fight tomorrow. So, you know, today I don't really, I still don't think I like the fight. I, you know, I'm looking forward to the weigh-ins now, food later, and then when I wake up, I'll be like, okay, this is what I've been waiting for for six weeks. And and, and my, my, my happy night has came, I'm, I'm a happy man. So, it's it's good, it's good, I'm just glad I made that weight. You said, you did say yesterday that was going to be a massive part of the week for you. It, does it kind of make you feel different now as you walk into tomorrow that there is kind of that pressure that's done now you've yeah. made weight you've yeah, done like, it just all eyes are on me like you know you saw that I've just literally been like three times in one week that's just strange and they it's were like they, they said like something like, what did they say to me they said oh we've got water for you and I said listen there's nothing in my shit there's nothing in my shit unless it's something like Canelo someone's putting shit in his meat <laughs> there's nothing in my fucking stuff don't you worry about that but They've been, you know, all eyes on me. The UFC wanted to know, you know, what was going on at, at the institute. All eyes were on me, you know. It's just, and 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 now it's all eyes off me, you know. Not, I, I'm not a bad person. I don't wish this on on anyone, but let's just hope someone misses weight soon and just get the eyes on him. <laughs> no, that's a joke. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't wish anyone missing weight up on anyone, even my enemies or whatever. It's it's just not a good thing. It, you know. It's not a good thing. The hate you get for it, it's fucking, it's ruthless. I swear to God, yeah. the hate for you. You know, anyone less, anyone with less more of a, a little bit of toughness in here would have been like, fuck, I can't stand this. But every single person who asked me the question about weight, I responded. I didn't shut no one down mm. ever. Not one, a uh, journalist or interviewer. Any time I, I responded because I'm true to me word. Adversity, good or bad, I will face ahead on until I rewrite that wrong and. and just a few hours ago, I rewrote it. You certainly did. Like, let, let's let's wrap this up then, because uh, you're about to head across to the ceremonial weigh-ins now. One last stare down. How does it end on Saturday? Like, I know, I know, it's a very cliche question, you know, but how does this kind of end? Because I know, I know you are, you do kind of look at the way this fight could play out. I'm supposed to say I'm gonna win. That's that's what the cliche. That's why it's so cliche because you're not gonna get me sitting here going, oh, I want to just have a good fight with Tyron. And uh, you know, made the best man win. Um, why would I want him to win? I want to win. I want to do everything to win, and hopefully, so does he. So that that's that's how it's gonna end with both of us. Want wanting wanting. It's a big want. Capital letters W A N T I N G. I'm glad I got that right because I would have got hell. But that's that's just it for me, mate. There's no. I'm just. I'm happy. Everything's perfect. Very different to what Liverpool was, isn't it? It's a very yeah, different feeling. Liverpool was amazing. It was. Th that thorn was in me, and now yeah. I finally took it out. So there's there's no more thorn. There's 
I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Stephen Thompson and his dad's still going on about weight. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Stephen. I've shared the octagon, but just the way he went on after that fight about weight was beyond belief because he knows that four pounds doesn't change the difference in a fight. W what he wants to play off was the fact that I say I'm a big welterweight, which I am, yeah, that was bigger than him. But just, you know, I feel like he and his dad went on unnecessarily. Like, it was too much. Yeah. It was too much hate. It was like... No, and they had every right. That's why I never piped up once. I never disrespected them. But now, I can, you know, he, he, him, and his father and his team know the reasons, uh, you know, why I missed weight. That there was a valid reason, but I didn't once give an excuse for it. But just because they knew about that reason, the way they went on, it disrespected me a bit. Yeah. Because it, it wasn't no shitty reason. Dana knows the the reason. Mm. Uh, a lot of people in Liverpool that night knew the reason. Yeah. But they went on and on and on and on for months and months. I kept seeing things pop up here and there. So they disrespected me. They disrespected me. And listen, Stephen can get that fight any fucking time he wants. In his back garden, anywhere, Vegas. I don't give a fuck. Just lastly, just one last one. Because today has been quite a, a quite a statement. 169 just told me it's like one of the easiest weight cuts ever. Does this kind of change the mindset? About Matt perhaps having a, a few more fights than you might have intended at one seventy. No, it's 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 over for me. Trust me, it's. You don't need to do it. What one or two more fights at welterweight? It's just. Uh, I'm not putting my body through this as much more. You know, it's it's rigorous. It, it is, and people are saying, why don't you just fight him in your natural category? Why don't every fucking fighter do that? Then we all cut weight. I may cut a bit more weight, but I started out as a welterweight, and I was what I wanted to finish, you know, with the title as a welterweight. I am one day away from this now, so you know that 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 that's what I'm away from. There was you know when I was eighteen, I wasn't thinking about oh I'll try welterweight. Now I started out, and and I'm gonna finish. So I'm I'm not putting my body through this torture. Uh, I'm getting older, I'm getting bigger, I'm getting stronger, and I'm getting more mature with, with, with everything in, in life now. So, one or two fights, and, and that's me. Ch ch ciao, ciao to the, the welterweight division forever. And if anyone wants to come up and, 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 and fight me, they can come up. Great stuff, great stuff. So, feelings of, of excitement now, I bet, 24 hours ahead of this fight. What, what's just the one last message to the, the fans back home? Because there's, there's certainly a lot of support being sent you. Yeah, a lot of support. Uh, just thank you. It's just, it's been a journey. There's been a lot of along the way, along the years. There's been a lot of disbelievers, and they've now become believers. And you know, back home in Liverpool, that that is just my my city that I I love and cherish. And you know, the the support I see from there, from normal people, from fighters themselves. Liverpool is just an incredible city and, and, and I'm glad to be a part. I can't wait to get back Sunday and just, you know, bop my head around all the places I go to, all my restaurants, you know. I'll be going to the Toby Carvery on in Aintree by my uncles for, for a nice roast dinner. You know, all the same places and, you know, I'll be out on, on Fridays and Saturdays having a good drink with my mates. So, Dan, I'll be back soon, but I've got business for tomorrow, so peace. Great stuff. Darren, thanks for your time. Best of luck to me. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it.